There's a ton of AI news I wanna to cover today, so I'm skipping the intro. Let's go. First, people figured out how to get Dolly 3 for free right now, and I wanna show you how to do it. Last week, Dolly 3 was released. It's an incredible AI generative art model that rivals Midjourney. It's rolling out right now to ChatGPT Plus users, which is $20 a month. In fact, I just got access to it. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do a full review of it. But a few people figured out that you can get Dolly 3 completely free right now. All you need is a Microsoft account. With your Microsoft account, navigate over to bing.com slash create and that's it. You now have the incredible Dolly 3 image generator. You initially get 100 credits, which is enough for 100 generations of four images each. And after that, you just might have to wait a little longer while your images are created. Check out some of these images from Dolly 3. They're truly incredible. And if I were mid-journey, which is $10 a month, and you can only use it through Discord, I'd be really nervous right now. Next, speaking of mid-journey, there's a set of images going viral right now, and people can't figure out if they're AI-generated or not. That should really speak to the current state of artificial intelligence and generative art specifically. Take a look at these images. They are wild. They show a very large man eating pizza with what looks to be an alligator in a swamp. I'm not actually sure if that's an alligator or a crocodile, but that's besides the point. Another image shows a piece of pizza hanging off this man's neck with a crocodile eating it, and his face seems extremely excited. And in the next one, he's doing a karate kick move to the face of a crocodile with other crocodiles around him. The only way these images are real is if it's from Florida. Sorry, Florida. These images are fantastical. It's hard for me to believe that they actually might be real. It's unverified right now, but the quality of these images are really good to the point where this Reddit post has over 37,000 upvotes at the time of this video, and no one can really seem to tell if it's real or not. What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you think this is real. Next, the MSG Sphere in Las Vegas had its first concert. The first artist to perform, you too. And the sphere itself is one of the most impressive feats of engineering that I've ever seen. I live in California and I'm only a little under a five hour drive away from Las Vegas and I've seen this thing in person and it's as incredible as it looks in all of the videos. Let me tell you some stats about it. The sphere is by the same company that made Madison Square Garden, MSG, in New York. And this one is called MSG Sphere. It costs 2.3 billion to create. It stands 366 feet tall and 516 feet wide. It has 160,000 high quality speakers and 260 million video pixels. It looks stunning from both the outside and the inside. We also found out this week that the cost to advertise on the sphere for just one day is $450,000 and an entire week is $650,000. So you really get a great price discount for that whole week. And the price includes the production of a 90 second spot. I'm a big fan of Las Vegas, I love going there, and I can't wait to go see a concert at the MSG Sphere. It looks like an incredible experience that mixes both the live aspect of a concert with the incredible visuals and almost like a mixed reality experience. Next, this week seems to be the week of AI wearable hardware. Three new innovative hardware devices were launched this week, and I'm gonna talk about all three of them, but with these launches comes some controversy, which I'll also talk about in a minute. The first device is the Humane AI Pin, which was created by ex-Apple executives and uses projectors, cameras, and AI tech, all packed into a small form factor that you're supposed to wear. The company Humane, which makes the device, unveiled the AI Pin at the Paris Fashion Show with supermodel Naomi Campbell as the first person outside the company to wear the device in public. According to Engadget, the company the company describes the device as a screenless standalone device and software platform built from the ground up for AI. It's powered by an advanced Qualcomm Snapdragon chip and equipped with a mini projector that takes the place of a smartphone screen along with the camera and speaker. So basically, if you look at this video, you can see that somebody is just holding their hand out and the AI device projects the user interface onto their hand. The device also performs functions like AI-powered optical recognition, but it's supposedly privacy first and there is no always listening mode. Personally, I don't think I'm gonna use the device. 
I just don't see it replacing my phone. Next is the Tab device by Avi Schiffman. The Tab device, again, is a wearable AI hardware device and is touted as an AI companion. It also integrates data from users' daily lives. It monitors conversations actively and provides instant access to the world's knowledge through AI models. According to Avi, by having Tab listen in on key conversations throughout the day, whether it's concerns that users mention or ideas they brainstorm, you don't have to worry about forgetting anything. And you chat with this device later on as it retains all the context throughout your daily life. And you can brainstorm with it for new ideas. You can ask it what you should do today or just generally have someone to talk to. And again, I'm not so sure I'm gonna be using it. And the last device is by a company called Rewind AI. Rewind AI is a very impressive software product that basically records a lot of what you do on the computer every day, and it allows you to query against it and provides suggestions all through AI. But now they've designed and launched a wearable device that essentially records everything you do all day, very similar to the previous products I mentioned. According to the website, they've already had over 3,000 pre-orders for the device. Now let's talk about what you're all probably thinking. Do I really want to wear a device that's recording everything I do and say all day? Personally, I understand the value of never forgetting anything and having an AI assistant remind me of things before I even know I need it. But with that out of the way, I honestly wouldn't use these devices. And I actually think there's some benefit for forgetting some things during the day. Our brains are not meant to remember everything. And even if we had a device to help us remember everything, I don't think we're supposed to. I believe we were actually meant to forget things that are just not as important as other things in our lives. And of course, the big controversy is the privacy factor. All three of these products claim to be privacy first, but how can they be when it's recording everything around you at all times? I I can imagine someone walking into a public space with one of these devices on and everyone around them would be pretty upset about it. There's an argument to be made that we're already in this world because everybody has a device in their pocket that can record everything in video, but it still takes someone taking out their phone and actually actively recording and it's pretty obvious when that's happening. With these devices, it's not going to be super obvious when somebody's recording you. And I suspect either on a federal level or a state level, at least in the US, there's gonna be a lot of legal pushback, if not complete banning of these types of devices. So are you gonna get one? Let me know. Next, Meta released Llama 2 Long, which is an AI model based on the Llama 2 model that Meta released a few weeks ago, but allows for longer context windows, which is always a welcomed feature. According to the VentureBeat article, Meta's new elongated AI model outperforms some of the leading competition in generating responses to long user prompts, including OpenAI's GPT 3.5 Turbo with its 16,000 token limit, as well as Claude 2 with its 100,000 token limit. Longer context windows means longer prompts and responses, which is good for a range of AI use cases, including coding. I'll drop a link in the description below for where you can download the Llama 2 Long version. Next, the biggest YouTuber in the world, Mr. Beast, called out a deep fake of himself promoting a scammy $2 iPhone. Take a look at this video now and you can see that the deep fake actually looks pretty good and the voice is decent, but it's likely enough to convince many people that this is real. Watching this video, you're one of the 10,000 lucky people who'll get an iPhone 15 Pro for just $2. I'm Mr. Beast and I'm doing the world's largest iPhone 15 giveaway. Click the link below to claim yours now. Mr. Beast took to Twitter, now known as X, to let people know to avoid this scam. Mr. Beast said, lots of people are getting this deepfake scam out of me. Are social media platforms ready to handle the rise of AI deepfakes? This is a serious problem. And I completely agree. I know there's a lot of researchers that are trying to invent ways to detect AI generated content, but there's always gonna be bad actors who are able to create this and subvert detection. This isn't the first deepfake out there. Tom Hanks and Gail King have both been targeted in AI deepfakes. Because these celebrities have so much video of them online, it makes it especially easy to create deepfakes based on their likeness. So as has been the case since the beginning of the internet, don't believe everything you see online and always verify 
before giving your information, especially your credit cards. And it looks like Apple is bucking the trend of mass layoffs within the tech industry. Apple CEO Tim Cook said the company will be hiring researchers and engineers in the UK. Although Apple hasn't directly announced any AI features or large language models, there have been a number of rumors of them building an internal large language model likely to power future versions of Siri called Ajax. According to the BBC article, Mr. Cook said AI was behind several prominent features on Apple devices already, such as software that detects if a person has fallen or been in a crash, as well as more commonly used tools such as predictive typing. These features are great, but only scratch the surface of what's possible with AI, especially when you have these incredibly powerful chips in most people's pockets that can power many large language models. I just reviewed a very small large language model that could likely fit on any phone and it performed incredibly well. It's called Mistral 7B. I'll drop a link to that video in the description below. It's only a matter of time until Apple releases a large language model powered version of Siri and I can't wait for it, especially if it's able to actually execute commands using something akin to code interpreter. And next, it looks like Apple isn't the only tech giant making AI news this week. Google released their new Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro phones that are packed with AI features. According to their blog post about it, these new versions of Pixel phones are built with AI at the center for a more helpful and personal experience powered by the Tensor G3 chip. For example, you can use Magic Editor within Google Photos that uses generative AI to help you bring your photos in line with the essence of the moment you were trying to capture. And at what point does a photo that's been heavily manipulated with AI not actually represent reality anymore? That's something that I actually think about quite often. And Google is also including an improved AI call screener, which helps you receive 50% fewer spam calls on average. I'm an iPhone user and I get spam calls every day, all day. So I would love a feature like that. They're also beefing up Google Assistant, which will be powered by a lot of the AI research that they've been working on. It might be time for me to switch back to an Android phone. Next, continuing with Google, Google DeepMind has launched a new model called RTX. This model is supposedly extremely good at writing instructions for robots. This is something that I made a video about a while ago, but it's finally coming out and being published. According to the DeepMind blog post, today we are launching a new set of resources for general purpose robotics learning across different robot types. The basic way to think about this is like code interpreter, which is able to write code and execute code in an environment. But rather than writing Python code, which it usually is, it's writing code that can make robots do things. This is another step in the direction of having an AI robot personal assistant in every house. Ever seen the movie iRobot? If not, I'll save you the time. It ended really well and there were no problems at all. Next, Sam Altman can't seem to keep his foot out of his mouth. Elizabeth Weil notes, in a new profile of the OpenAI CEO that he has mentioned that AI will likely replace what he calls a median human. According to the article in futurism.com, Altman's hope is that artificial general intelligence will have roughly the same intelligence as a median human that you could hire as a coworker. Although he might be right in predicting what artificial intelligence in the workforce looks like in the future, he really needs to think about how his words are coming across to the general public who aren't as excited about this AI revolution. Last week, he joked about Open OpenAI achieving AGI internally, which he quickly clarified was a joke. And this week he's talking about humans as if they are completely replaceable. So as the CEO of the leading AI company, he should really be more thoughtful about how he conveys his predictions of the future as it relates to AI. Next, in what seems like a trend that I'm all for, more small models are being released. This week, Stability AI released a 3 billion parameter version of their stable LM model. In their Twitter post, Stability AI says they are bringing sustainable, high-performance language models to smart devices. I'm a huge fan of these smaller, highly performant models that can be loaded onto pretty much any device with no internet connection. It still absolutely blows my mind that we can have the entirety of human knowledge baked into just a few gigabytes of storage. Let me know if you want me to do a full test of the stable LM3B model. Next, and probably my favorite story of the week, Microsoft released Autogen, which is a framework to build multi-agent capabilities into large language model applications. You can think of this as ChatGPT plus code interpreter plus plugins, but it's fully customizable and flexible. Essentially, you can give a group of AI agents an assignment and they'll go do it. They have a bunch of tools at their disposal and they can execute code as well. I've already made a video tutorial showing you how to use it and I plan on making more videos about it because I'm completely enamored with it. I've also been building things that will help me automate stuff that I do every day and I plan on making videos 
showing off those things as well. I'll drop a link in the description below for where you can check out Autogen, as well as the tutorial video where I show you actually how to use it. If I were to make a prediction about which AI technology was going to be the most valuable in the future, this would certainly be a top contender. Next, we have another story about a robot. This one's design is absolutely insane. This robot, which stands on two legs or two wheels, can carry incredibly heavy things and is extremely agile. Built by a German company, Fran Hoffer, this robot is an autonomous mobile robotic system. Take a look at this video showing off what this robot is capable of. <laughs> I believe robots are going to be increasingly used in our society, especially as AI continues to be injected into them. They just become that much more valuable. There are definitely concerns about having smart robots everywhere, but I actually tend to be pretty optimistic about the future of robotics. Next, Canva. The web-based image editor has released its own generative AI product. I'm a huge fan of Canva, and in fact, Canva is what I use for all of my YouTube thumbnails. I can't even draw a stick figure, so creating those thumbnails I thought would be impossible for me, and I thought I'm gonna need to hire somebody. But then I found Canva, which allows me to easily create those thumbnails and is infinitely simpler than Photoshop. And this isn't a sponsorship by Canva. I'm just a huge fan. Canva's new product is called Magic Media, and it lets you do text to image easily. And not only images, it allows you to do video, which is unique compared to Midjourney and Dolly. Right now, I'm only aware of Gen 2 being able to generate AI video, so this is really impressive. This week's video of the week is maybe my favorite one so far. I found this one through Billawal Sidhu's X post, and it's originally created by Ruben Fro on X. Ruben says this is created by using burning Gaussian splat in Unity 3D. The results are absolutely gorgeous. Check out this video now. And here's another example by the same creator using Gaussian splashing. I don't really know much about these techniques, but they're gorgeous, and I'm gonna have to do more research into them. For our last story, we're talking about the Arc web browser. I haven't personally used the Arc browser much, but many of my friends use it every day as their daily driver. Josh Miller, who's the CEO of the browsing company, which makes the Arc browser, is going all in on AI. In a story by The Verge, he talks about being happy to have missed the crypto wave, but has identified the AI wave as something that he's willing to bet the company on. He wants to embed AI into every aspect of your web browser. Here are some of the features that are going to be coming to the web browser powered by AI. First, ask ChatGPT, which will allow you to ask the AI questions right from the Arc command line. This seems like the most obvious feature and probably the least innovative one. But next, Arc is also including something called tidy tab titles. So when you pin a tab in the browser, Arc will automatically rename the tab to something that is cleaner and more concise. And similarly, tidy downloads will automatically rename files that you download. For example, sometimes you get these long and cryptic file names when you download something from the internet, but Arc will not now rename it for you to something that will actually describe what the download is. Also, they're going to include five second previews, which allows you to hover over any link, hold down the shift key, and then Arc will fetch a short summary and preview of that web page. Last is a feature called Ask Page. So when you use the command F on a website, which typically allows you to find a word on the page, it'll not only look for that keyword as normal, but if it can't find it, it'll use AI to get an answer to your query specific to the page that you're looking at, which seems awesome. I use command F every day, all day. According to the story, all of these features, the CEO says, serves the same goal. They make your internet life easier and help you do stuff without screaming, look at all this AI. 
So maybe it's time for me to try out the Arc browser. If you like this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.